He's the patron saint of fathers, but also of carpenters, craftsmen, and workers. On May 1st, the church celebrates St. Joseph the Worker. It's a feast that intentionally coincides in many countries with the Day of the Worker. Born from the 1890 protests in the United States and Europe, demanding fair working conditions. Today, the secular holiday is celebrated in many countries around the world. In 1955, Pope Pius XII instituted the Solemnity of St. Joseph the Worker to help the faithful not to lose the Christian understanding of work. Pius XI had already named St. Joseph as a model for workers. Joseph loved his work. He didn't complain about his fatigue. For him, work was not a means to enrich himself or gain prestige, but to serve his family and give glory to God. Pope John Paul II, in the encyclical Laborum Exertions, writes about the gospel of work, referring to the scriptures and Jesus' own life. Starting in Genesis, it's clear that work is part of being human. Indeed, although the fatigue of work is a consequence of sin, Work itself is instead a gift from God through which human beings participate in the work of the Creator and in His salvific plan. God Himself is the eternal worker and in the Old Testament is compared from time to time to a wine grower rather than a sower or a shepherd. Jesus was known as the carpenter's son. He had learned the profession from St. Joseph and had worked in his father's workshop for most of his life. His preaching is full of examples drawn from the world of work. The parables of the kingdom of God are a continuous reminder of this reality. He talks about shepherds, farmers, doctors, sowers, administrators, and merchants. He compares the apostolate itself to the work of harvesters or fishermen. Looking to St. Joseph, we can discover the beauty and the dignity of work. <laughs>